ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MIT. It's a fantastic morning for a workshop on nanotech and new materials, new beginnings. As you know, nanotech has and is fueling a lot of the innovations that are happening right now uh, with the help of new materials at, uh, um, you know, both at nano and other and micro scales. And arguably, this is where it's at for the next wave of innovation in many, many fields across industry, product development, advanced manufacturing, but, but even in other fields that we may not think about. We are asking this morning, how is it that nanotech in a certain sense disappeared from that sort of tech trend debate in a, uh, over the last few years? But is it still um, the case that nanotech can be such a platform technology that um, I think many of you in the room have been working for it to become? And is this the nanotech decade? Um, these are some of the questions we're pondering. The good thing is, these are big questions, but we have a lot of you in the room are the movers and shakers in this debate uh, at MIT, in the startup ecosystem, and, and actually globally. So I think this is a very exciting moment to be discussing these topics. As you know, here at the Startup Exchange, which is a service run by ILP, the Industrial Liaison Program at MIT, we have a lot of startups uh, that we are connecting with large companies that are partnering with MIT on innovation. Many of those, in fact, a lot more than would be visible from the fact that the nanotech cluster only sort of has 34 startups, a lot of those startups are interested in the topics of this morning. New materials, nanotech, it actually spans these tech clusters. Tech clusters were just established as a quick way to get a little bit of an organization in this ecosystem. But as you know, these topics cross-fertilize each other. So when I think the topic today is uh, nanotech and new materials innovation, it is a topic that is going to profoundly impact and be impacted by many of these 1,059, I believe it's now 1,060 startups that we are connecting to large industry players. I usually uh, give a shout out to some other topics um, just to give you a sense. Um, I don't have a lot of time for that this morning, but you know, at MIT we're working on innovation in any field. Uh, big data, synthetic biology, um, healthcare innovation, you name it. Today, however, I wanted to spend just one minute on uh, the whole calendar that this is part of. This morning it is about nanotech and new materials. Last month, it was about digital healthcare. Um, upcoming, we have an R&D conference with a focus uh, on startup exchange in one of the tracks. We have a big, big startup ecosystem conference on the 1st of December. I would encourage everybody to be there. It's going to be the biggest display of startups, I think, you have seen. But also, it's going to be a major, major connecting point, uh, which we are so fortunate to be making between MIT, large industry, and startups. We have an exciting calendar for the spring. Uh, it pretty much covers the most exciting topics you can think of. And it's a year-round calendar, monthly. This is long overdue, but if you think that this operation is easy to run, it is not. Those people that you see here on the right are in the room. The effort it takes to put something like this together on a monthly basis to have an active database outreach to 1,000 startups, liaising with 230 large companies, and trying to make some sense out of this and make wise connections. It takes, um, it takes an army, it takes a team, it takes an enormous effort. Here are some of the people. Casey uh, over there and Lisa. Eric is manning the Twitter feeds over there. Um, Margaret, where is she? Margaret, yep. And uh, Janelle Group for Web. And a good part of the industrial liaison officers, uh, part of ILP, are also involved. Because every time we make a connection, it is with a company that has an officer who has a portfolio of you know, around 10 of these companies. This is a major, major effort of the school. It is not easy to do, but we are very excited by the results we're seeing. Um, we have produced videos. We have gathered information about startups. But it is intelligent information. It is up to date. And it also has, uh, as I said, multimedia content associated with it. We have actually not done eight, but 10 workshops. Um, and we aim to do some annual analytics on what's happening in the startup community. 
This is what we actually do. When a large company comes to us, we allow them to post something similar to this. This is the template. They state what they're looking for. They state a um, little bit about their track record. What we really care about is to make sure that the process of connecting between a large and a small company gets more and more frictionless. And we are trying to launch uh, ideas and, and processes that is going to make that even more easy. So any ideas you have to help us do that would be valuable. Here are some of the companies we have been working with. Two more are on stage today. Here's just a little result. This company, I think both companies, are, are, uh, should be in the room today as well. This is what we're looking for. We aim for creating partnerships between large multinational MIT startup for mutual benefit. This was just signed this summer between Dropwise and Henkel. There are, success has many mothers. We are by no means saying, you know, this initiative caused the partnership. Of course, the partners themselves caused the partnership. But this is the kind of success that we want to see. Going a little back into history, and by no means is this just Stex's result, but just to give you an indication, a while back, you know, Merck Pharmaceutical invested 500 million in one of MIT's startups called Smart Cells. These are the kinds of things. And then thirdly, uh, Whitricity, uh, which is a very exciting startup here um, that are now moving into wireless charging, have been backed by several of our member companies. This is exciting stuff. It's world-shaking stuff. Uh, without further ado, let me introduce Carl Koster, who heads up ILP. And he will also explain a little bit more about Startup Exchange and why we have Startup Exchange.